Hello, I am about to do an injection for a patient who's got a tear in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. This is an interesting injection and I've got the MRI on screen. We're going to do ultrasound guided injection of ostinil, which is sodium hyaluronate, hyaluronic acid, to provide more shock absorbency um, within the knee joint, which is a synovial joint. So, I love looking at MRIs of ankles and knees and feet. Um, I send quite a few patients off for MRIs. And what normally happens is I get the images straight away on, on the system, but the report, the radiographer's report, takes about seven to 10 days. So during that period, I try and guess the diagnosis. And nine times out of 10, I get it right, which is a great way to learn. Um, Couple of, a couple of things. We as podiatrists, we don't diagnose based on ultrasound, MRI, or x-rays. That's the job of a radiographer. We use images to aid our clinical diagnosis. Um, but I'm really passionate about all podiatrists, especially podiatrists that work within MSK, musculoskeletal uh, medicine, we should be able to read MRIs, x-rays and ultrasounds of the knees and ankles and feet because we are the lower limb experts. So I'm going to briefly go through this MRI and then we're going to have a look at his medial meniscus. And then if he lets me, I may uh, record the injection as well. That should be interesting. So let's start off with the knee. Now, on the left-hand side, you can see a um, two images which are coronal images. So that's viewing the knee from the front, and then they're taking slices. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see a sagittal image, which is like a side view. And we'll go through that briefly also. Um, what you can see on screen is a T1-weighted and a... Um, and a, uh, and a stir image. Now with a stir image, the fat is suppressed, so um, fluid is quite bright. So what you can see first of all is, let me see if I can do this and annotate it at the same time. This should be interesting. All right, yes. So that's the patella, which is the kneecap. At the top of there, you've got the quadriceps tendon and the patella tendon. Uh, and as we come in, um, now that's the femur, that's the tibia. What I look for generally is um, I'm looking at the bone first. So I'm looking at the bone, seeing if there's any obvious cysts, tumors, fractures, uh, I'll be, I'll, and then I'll be looking at the cartilage. Then I move on to ligaments, tendons, and the muscles. Um, so we're looking at any obvious things in the bone itself, any bone edema, any contusions. Um, so we're looking at the bone marrow to begin with. This structure here, you can see this black line here and you can see it here too that's attaching to the outside of the tibia and a little bit of bone called Gerdes tubercle I love it when they name bits of bone after people that's the iliotibial band um, it's great now if I move forward there this side here that's the medial collateral ligament the MCL uh, that's a posterior cruciate ligament, what you can see there from the uh, lateral aspect of the, uh, from the medial aspect of the, of the lateral femoral condyle is the ACL. And you can see there's the bundle of ACL there. That's the fibular collateral ligament, uh, popliteus tendon. Go further back, that is biceps femoris attaching to the head of the fibula. That's awesome, isn't it? Ah, I Absolutely awesome. Uh, that's the lateral um, gastrocnemius, media gastrocnemius, semimembranosis, gracilis, this long thin muscle here. That's sartorius, and that's the tendon of semitendinosis. Give you a brief, I could spend hours talking about MRIs of knees. They're so fascinating. But let's get back to this gentleman's problem. So I'm not going to go over the ACL and the PCL in too much detail. The menisci are shock absorbers that are, are inside your knees. And um, 
they they fall in between the big bone in your leg and the smaller leg in and the smaller bone in your lower leg so the femur and the tibia um the this black area here are the menisci so that's the medial meniscus and that's the lateral meniscus and when you go posteriorly you can see a tear so if i zoom into there this gentleman's got a tear i guess this right actually i was quite proud of myself um you can see it quite well on this image now if i can move into the sagittal image uh which is a side view and i'm hoping the video is not covering up this too much let's see if i can see that now you can actually see it there too that's the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and you can see the tear there too um fascinating you can see the gastrocnemius the popliteus tendon um and what's so good about the sagittal image is you get a really good view of the extensor mechanism. Which, if I could move this over here, you can see, you can see the, pop, uh, the quadriceps tendon, uh, that's the patella, patella tendon, Hoffa's fat pad, pre, pre uh, uh, super patella uh, fat pouch, uh, and the prefemoral fat there. Um, that's the PCL posterior cruciate ligament that's the acl and you actually always see well always you often see a s signal in the acl um but it's good to it's good to view this quite well i am not so good with axial images that's when you're looking straight down um i'm good with axial images with the ankle but not so much with the knee i'll get confused but you can view a you can see a lot with these two images uh, and this gentleman, we are going to do an ostinal injection into this area here, ultrasided guided, to ensure he is pain free so he can carry on playing golf, which is the main thing that he wants to do. So this should be interesting. <laughs> 